a comment from a viewer that I need way more yeast than I'm using. And my gut feeling was, nah, I'm doing just fine. Um, but I didn't have the data to back it up. So, here's an experiment. The weighing paper, 0.18 grams, and let's see if I can, I just want 0 0.05, so Well, that was messy. Um, can you see it? It's barely there. Just a little bit. Number one, 0 0.05 grams of yeast. Yeah, you can see that. I'm going to use the same piece of weighing paper. go 50 grams. So that would take it, I mean, 0. 0.5 grams. So 0. 0.68. That's roughly 10 times as much. Come on. Close enough for government work. Let's open this beast. So the second one point. Six eight minus zero point one eight. Grams. All right, this is Lalvin EC one 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 eight, which is uh, champagne yeast. I like it because it kicks in fast and it's what I've got in the fridge right now. So I'm going to use it. There are actual yeasts available, very specifically, for making apple cider. Okay, to me, that's a lot of yeast. But, that's the experiment. And you can already see it starting to drop. Okay, we're going to keep this very simple. This is number two. Wow, all that yeast dropped. This is number one.
take the uh, weighing machine out of the way. I'm not playing any silly games like a magician in the in the cups and the balls. No, not playing those games. Okay. Now, these are, I wash them in bleach, so they are clean internally, although this one seems to have some water. After putting the bleach through, it was rinse, rinse, rinse. Oh look, the cap is a different color. You think that'll make a difference? I don't. All right, we have set the experiment. Thing one and thing two. We'll see what happens. I'm really curious to see how this works. Um, I will take a couple of more videos as the ferment starts. And I'm planning on leaving this for at least a month. Uh, and then we got friends over, so that'll be fun. Okay, remember, uh, if you need extra, all you have to do is drill a hole and use your tubing insertion press and you got yourself a new blow-off tube. I prefer using a blow-off tube because it puts all the sticky stuff off to the side. Uh, everyone's done the balloon line before where you poke a hole and wrap a balloon on it and then you put a pinhole in the balloon and it blows it up and, and it spitters and sputters and you collect all kinds of fruit flies right there. Ah! All right. Experiment is underway. It is 12 hours later-ish. Number one. Starting to see a little bit of result. Not much. No worries. Number two. Lots of foam. And it is concentrating in those weird areas, which is because of the form on the bottom, so everything is very nice and still inside. Okay. And how much drive have we gotten coming down? Okay. Um, it has not burped yet. So, not much. Neither one has burped. But number two, as one would believe, having ten times as much yeast to start with, has more bubbles to start with. Not a problem. That one's going to go faster. But, it's, at the end, I believe it's going to have the same um, amount of alcohol. Okay. But it's different. But in the long run, is it going to be different? That's what we're going to find out. 24 hours have passed, and... Oh, that's a big difference, isn't it? That one's still clear. That one's very cloudy. That one's got bubbles. That one... Maybe? Just barely starting. Not only that, but if you follow the loop around, the one with all the activity is, of course, the one that's burping. But the other one, now, I've positioned them so that the two tubes, the blow-off tubes, are at about the same height. The second tube has pushed the air all the way to the end. Now I'm going to just touch the cap. You ready? You saw it. Came up. There is back pressure happening enough to drive the, the gas down an inch. So yeah, something is happening in there, but not very much. And that's fine. I had ten times as much yeast to start with. <laughs> Who's not surprised? that it's getting a slower start on the one that has less yeast. 
Okay. The other thing is, right at the very top, where the blow-off tube goes into the cap, you'll see that there's just a little bit of stuff. This is very common. Uh, the way I make my blow-off tubes is it's a 0.25 inch tube, and I make a 0.23 inch hole, and that provides a very secure fit. But it also makes a little bit of a narrowing, a waste, if you will, which tends to collect stuff. On the other one, there's nothing collecting on the waist because the bubbles haven't started yet. And that's okay. We're going to leave this here for a month at least. If this gets a one or two day head start, nobody's surprised. It's been 48 hours. Apple juice one, apple juice two. Lots of bubbles in the second one. And in the first one, well, the bubble pattern is indeed different. There's a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm going to say that's probably just yeast that's thrown up onto the wall of the apple juice container. Well, there's apple juice there, and it's still got stuff thrown onto the wall, but let's look at the bubbles. Okay. It goes around, and it's on this side for the number one. This goes around, and it's on the right for the number two. So, number two seems to be putting out more gas. One, two, three, and a half. So the number two seems to be putting out about three times as much gas or so. It's been two days and they're getting close. Yesterday that was absolutely clear. Now it's gotten hazy so I'm going to interpret that. The yeast has gotten a lot more populous. In this one I don't see much difference between yesterday and today. I don't think the yeast population has gone up much. And if we look at, there's stuff up there, so some bubbles have crashed into the blow-off tube. And in this one, maybe, but not so much. And yet, if you've used a blow-off tube before, you know that what you wind up with is stuff going down the tube. That hasn't happened yet. It might. But for whatever reason, the surface tension isn't very high. The bubbles are breaking pretty quick. More bubbles are coming up in number two, but they also are breaking pretty quick. Day two. Details, details, details. 0 0.05 grams, 0.5 grams. That's a half a gram versus a tenth of that. And I'm gonna say number two is in the lead. But number one is making a good showing. Two and a half days. They're pumping out carbon dioxide at the same rate. Now, I believe that number two is farther ahead in the cycle and it's starting to slow down, whereas number one is still speeding up a little bit. So they're at slightly different stages. The color is a little bit different. Number two seems to be milkier, and number one seems to be slightly cleaner. But no matter, after everything solidifies and settles to the bottom, they're going to look the same. Here we are, back to the experiment. It's been 11 days, and number one has some foam. Number two, the foam has pretty much died down, but it's still bubbling. Number one 
it's bubbling nicely. Let's see, how much bubblies do we get from which side? That was a spurgle, and that was a bubble. So they're still fermenting. And they're still being guarded. So, one thing that I did notice, this one, concentrate from Poland, and this one, concentrate from Ukraine, Moldovia. I picked those up at Walmart. They were side by side. I put them in the cart. I did not look to see that they were identical. They're pretty close. I mean, they have the same label, but they are concentrates from a different location. <sighs> Somebody wants attention. Okay. Anyway, Kitty knows he's not supposed to be up on the counter. He don't listen, do he? <laughs> but yeah, it's about 11 days in, and they are acting pretty normal. Um, even if my cat isn't acting normal. <laughs> it's been 23 days, and we started with 0 0.05 grams of yeast in this one, and 0.5 grams of yeast in this one. And now they are the same. They are equally as clear. Um, that's all that we're going to get. But to verify that the sugar has been turned into alcohol, we're going to open it up. Yeah, I squeezed the bottle and that made it burp. Don't, don't be thinking that's fast fermentation. It's not. So, here we have a density checker. It should float about there, more or less, and the problem will be it's going to try to pick up some bubbles. So we're going to spin it. And, like I said, there's bubbles. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. And we want it to spin in the middle because touching the wall is always problematic. Can you see the bubbles that have formed on it? Yeah. Wah. It's hard to get an accurate reading when it's got bubbles attached. Okay. It is. Yeah. All right, then we'll do it differently. There's 0.0%. That is where it should rest for 0.0%. And it's just a little bit above that. So there is some sugar or more likely it's picking up bubbles. And since it's slowly being driven up, I'd say that's bubbles. Yeah. So, there's the 0.0%, .0 and it was at about there. So, just a little bit. Okay, let's try the second one. He burped. Here we go. I'm going to rinse those in the sink, but not until the video is done. Always rinse, rinse, rinse. It saves you a lot of work later. What's it say? This one says, come on. Gotta read 
read it at the meniscus line. Now it's stuck to the wall. Wah. Ah. Ah. It's never easy. I picked up some goopy stuff off the wall. And... It is reading about the same zero. They are identical. So, all of the alcohol has been dug out of the uh, sugar. So, we have another test. This is actually more important as far as I'm concerned. This is the taste test. Okay. Yummy. Mm. So that's number two. So it has a little bit of malic taste. Um, apples have malic acid. Um, it's that stuff that puckers your mouth a bit. Let's try this one. Okay, this one's seen number one it seems to have more bubbles. And a slightly milder taste, but not by much. Very close, almost identical. You can see that that has more bubbles, and that has fewer. It still has some, but fewer. All right, now I'm going to teach you something very important. When you have two glasses, the ladies is on the left. Okay? Um, you don't ever think about this as the rulers is on the right. It's always the ladies on the left, and don't think about it. And the reason for that is, if you bring the glasses back to the kitchen and take them back wrong, now you've got lipstick on your glass. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Now I gotta find me a lady.